Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb. My name is Keo and I'm joined today by Peter. Hi. And we're here to do another episode of the T Dubs show, which is short for Things We Watched. It's a name that we just don't have a better name for yet. So we're going to stick with it. And today we're going to talk about uh, a show that I've waited for a long time uh, to see, realized, and uh, we'll find out a bit more about Peter's history. And this is Netflix The Sandman, or should I say Neil Gaiman's the Sandman. We, we haven't watched the whole thing yet. We didn't binge the whole thing. First, we're going to give our first impressions, what we think of the show so far. With those first two episodes, we'll go about maybe five, seven minutes on that with no spoilers, and then we'll do some spoilers. And with that, what are the names of the first two episodes, Peter? It's Sleep of the Just and okay. uh, Imperfect Hosts, I think, is episode two. Episode Wh- one is Sleep of the Just. Which is the same as the books, um, if I remember correctly. All right, so funny thing. About you mentioning about my history with this. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Neil Gaiman's works. I'm a big fan oh, of Vertigo no. Comics and DC Comics. I know where this is going. <laughs> oh, no. This is the first time that I walked into the Sandman. So you know nothing about the Sandman? Very little. I only know Morpheus. I only know that he's dreaming. That's it. I read the Sandman in graphic novel form uh, over 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's been a while. I tried last Monday. There's a tweet about it. To read... To reread all of the Sandman before the show came out. Uh-huh. Failed terribly at that. Because it turns out, uh, I, I think maybe graphic novel might be the perfect um, medium for this story. It's just too visual. Yeah. And we'll it, go into that later. It's very visual. And uh, so jumping into, into Netflix's The Sandman, uh, I really like that there was just a bunch of stuff that was ripped visually right out of the of the graphic novel and i was worried because a lot of that stuff is kind of dated as far as graphic novels go it's an old graphic novel mm. that art style is of that era so if you make a show won't it also look like it's of that era i see where you're coming from yeah and it actually does mm. and that's great you what are your first impressions i found the visuals phenomenal for one like for a netflix show <laughs> There's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cinematography was great. I loved the lighting on some of the shots. I liked how the shots were composed. The actor who played the Sandman looks very much like him. He looks very yeah, He was a yeah. great Morpheus. Yeah. What's his name? Oh, the actor? Yeah, I don't the actor. remember. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever you as, are, but, but you're great. <laughs> but that's the thing. As far as we're concerned, he's Morpheus. Yeah. It's fantastic. So jumping into spoilers, um, for the Sandman in general... And for this show, uh, one of the one of I think your favorite characters in the DC universe is Ooh, yeah. John Constantine. Yeah, right. And, and speaking of Constantine, they got his name right, the pronunciation. They did, mm. but one of the major changes that I've seen so far, they haven't shown the character yet, but they name checked her as Joanna Constantine. Yeah. So they're doing a gender swap on this character. Now, th- there are a few... Not exactly. Now, you have an idea of, of how that's different. Yeah. It's not he, a in gender the book, swap. No, in the book, he's John Constantine. It's not a gender swap. You know why? Okay. Joanna Constantine actually exists in okay. the Sandman universe. Mm-hmm. But she is an ancestor of John Constantine. That's correct, yes. And yes. Um, there, Joanna under- was yeah, meant ahead. to be written as a tribute to uh, Alan Moore's John Constantine. Yeah. And Neil Gaiman wrote her into the Sandman universe. So she's an actual character, but she's not meant to be in the modern world. Yeah, so m- this is my understanding, is that um, the there is the ancestor who exists also in the Sandman universe, and there is John Constantine. Yeah. So th- this character is not brought forward from the future, uh, from the past into the future. She is... A woman with the same name as her ancestor. Joanna? Maybe. Yeah. But this is my understanding. Yeah, like, that's my understanding. Yeah, or, what they're trying to do. Or they probably swapped John and Joanna. Because they can't put John into the story. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It's it's not so clear in this show that it is a DC Universe um, property. Um, but it definitely is. Mm-hmm. Right? I think that's a being. It, it definitely is. Um which really begs the question, why is this thing on Netflix? Like, why isn't it on HBO Max? Why isn't it 
more actively being um, promoted as a DC thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think those are questions that are that are decent to ask. That first sequence with his raven, Jessamy, flying all mm-hmm. across the waking world and the dreaming the world, world of dreams world of dreams yeah. the world of dreams that was a or the dreaming world yeah that was a nice shot so good that yeah. was a great sequence and it actually becomes a really important fly through later on yeah because like you need to establish that this is the state that we're in mm-hmm. and then later on you'll we get to see um, that entire world decimated what's the name of the captor uh, the old man Roderick Burgess. Burgess, yeah. So Burgess summons the Sandman by accident, traps him for a hundred years. Yeah. And then when he's about to die, about well, traps him. And then when he's uh, when he's an old man, his son gets into a fight with him over all of it, right? In the in the moment where, because I really like Jeremy, the Raven. Mm, Jessamy. I'm oh, sorry. I really like Jessamy, the Raven. Um, and they kill him. They kill him. Like the, the, you see him, he does some cool stuff, and I didn't know why he had to die like that. I don't know. Maybe they just needed something to fill the screen. Uh, so I mean, I'm not. I I don't think it's a problematic, ad, you know, um, a problematic addition to the to the story. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just strange that they felt like they had to add these things, as well as with. Uh, What's the name of the guy with the glasses? The uh, the new big bad. That Corinthian. was Corinthian. Yeah, Corinthian is not that big a character in the book. He's just he's one of the characters, mm-hmm. and ma- mainly most of the Sandman stories, his journey back to becoming the Sandman and repairing all the damage of him disappearing. Mm. Um, but was he also an antagonist? He is, but he's kind of just like a like a thorn in the side or like a a stepping stone in the story, and it seems very much like he's being set up as a big bad guy. I see. In this show. He is genuinely scary, though. Yeah. Oh, my God. He played like, the part well. The, he felt sociopathic. Like he got so lucky in the in the beginning, right? He was supposed to be, uh, like, transported back into the dream world, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, <laughs> basically, Morpheus goes out to go get him, right? Yeah. Um... And in that moment, that's the exact moment when Morpheus gets snatched away yeah. by the by the summoning, um, which in itself was so scary. Yeah, like the summoning was so scary. It might be one of my favorite scenes. The execution was perfect, right? Um, you knew what you're looking at, but you didn't know what you're looking at. And then there's a kid in the scene. Like as soon as you put in a kid, all things that are scary to ten. Get scary to twelve. This is also the first time that I saw a summoning that um, that showed how reality was being warped. Yeah. Right on top of the magic circle, they don't usually show that. They just they just put lights and then boom. I think in the first episode, that's my favorite um, scene. For that, and then very very close is the Jessamy, um, where he sets a fire. The bird sets a fire, and in the end, we get to see the. There's so much in that episode. Uh, in the end, we get to see the security guard go into the dream world, and yeah. he manipulates him into shooting up the the, the, glass. the glass. Which, by the way, that was one part in the first episode that ruined my immersion. It's not really oh, ruined. Oh, okay. I was just thinking, how did they build that glass dome without, one, ruining the magic circle, which was easily erased by a wheelchair? Yeah. And how did they build that while keeping him in check? Hmm. Right? Because it was a very elaborate device. Yeah. It can't just be built in a day. They just showed that they just, they just showed the glass thing already be already built mm-hmm. around him. That was the yeah, only thing. Yeah, that's true. Are we jumping into episode two now? Yeah. You have no complaints about in episode one. Nothing. No. Hmm. I no, see. I actually thought it was a pretty perfect episode. Mm. Yeah. Maybe it was slow, um, but it was not slow without purpose. Like, you're supposed to feel like it's 100 years, right? Yeah. And me, I like that stuff. Like, I love Cast Away. 
I love that it feels like it takes so long, and I liked it with this. Mm. I like Apollo 13, where you feel like you're out in space and lost. And I felt that way with this. Like, oh, I'm locked up in a basement for so long. Yeah. Right? Mm. Episode 2, best scene, um, the, the dialogue with the fates. Yeah. Right at the end. Mm. Like, oh, my God. That was so... Like, you already know what's going to happen. Is he's going to ask a question. He's going to get an answer. He's going to ask another question. And like, shut up. And it happens three times. And each time, it actually connects. Yeah. Right? You still feel like it's great. They also properly portrayed how fate is the one who is three and the three who is one. Yeah, that was my favorite episode. Uh, my favorite episode two moment. How about you? Seeing that gate... So all you like is the game. So basically, every episode, 3 to 10, if there's a scene with a gate, this is high chances it's going to be your favorite uh, your favorite scene. In the no, movie. just, the, just the, the seeing the gate for the first time. Okay. It was great. Like, no, but you the see... The size, it, the but, scale. But this was your first... This is your first episode favorite scene also. What? The bird flies through the gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the bird flies through the gate, your favorite but scene. But it wasn't <laughs> shown in that proper scale. Like, That's true. They they showed Lucien and um, Morpheus standing in front of the gate. That's true. We and then, didn't see the entire scale of the gate until the camera panned up. Yeah. Like, what the... <laughs> and it's like a super fisheye camera, uh, camera shot. Yeah. Where, like, the sides are barely moving and the middle is moving really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a pretty great scene. It was like the sense of scale felt really awesome to me. Yeah. And hopefully that's something that they're able to continue doing. Uh, the CG budget on this thing was incredible. Yeah. Um, you do feel like there's a lot of green screen going on. You do. Yeah. You definitely do. Um, but that doesn't take away from the fact that the CG is awesome. Any last thoughts? Mm. I'm very excited to watch episodes three and four. Okay. Me too. Um, what happened when uh, Morpheus got torn away from his dream realm? Mm-hmm. And what happened to the people in the waking realm? Oh my God. Yeah. It's a big thing. That is a big thing. Yeah. So what happened was when Morpheus was taken out of the dream realm. Yeah. A million people had sleep problems. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Some people are eternally sleeping some of some of them can't sleep at all some people had more nightmares but some people just went on with their lives normally right yeah what um happened there i don't know i think maybe there are different levels of sleep that people need or engage or just some just some people who would power through it so some people don't dream at all Ooh, that's right? a tough one see you know, they never make it to REM. I understand why it's tough for you. That's it's true. also tough for me. And Good question. Th- the way that they showed the world is like, it doesn't feel like the world is having problems with this aside from just news. Right now, if we had to choose what method to enjoy this in, I would still say graphic novel, novel number one, show two. Do you need to read the graphic novel to watch a show? No. Both pieces of content stand entirely on their own. And I think that's a testament to Neil Gaiman, actually. Um, his ability to write in three-dimensional, four-dimensional um, storytelling, right? Yeah. Where like you see one layer that's flat, but you can totally extrude it out into so many other aspects. Again, the moments from the comic books that you see are like two to three seconds, and and then but the you know in in a show you have to show the entire beginning of that sequence, the entire part after what happened, and then that little frame is just. The money shot right in the middle. That was super cool to see. Uh, I think there might be less of those iconic moments moving forward. Or maybe they're just going to scatter it sporadically all throughout the series. Maybe. Uh, I would not consider myself one of the true fans. Uh, Maybe someone like that who knows better would know. I'm definitely a bigger Sandman fan now Now. than I was two weeks ago. (laughs) And me coming into this fresh. Yeah. I'm now a fan. There and you go. It, it, and it makes me want to read the graphic novel now. For those people who are com- going to come in into this show blind, I think it will be better for them to watch the show first before diving into the graphic novel. I would agree. Hmm. I would agree. Um, in conclusion, I think the thing that really bothers me the most about this show is how come the Why the Last Man show was so bad? 
What's Why the Last Man? We have it here. Why the Last Man? Yeah. Look it up. Okay. Homework. Look up Why the Last Man. Don't try to watch the show. It's really bad. You would think that a story like that that has kind of hit its its moment in, in you know society now um, would be better told, but it wasn't. It was terribly told. This just makes me want to watch the show even more. It's really like, bad. I want to see... I want to read it first and yeah. then watch the show yeah. just to see what's going on. What went wrong. Yeah. The, um, the one thing that we have here that I know and I've read mm-hmm. and I've watched the adaptation was The Losers. And I, I like the movie. It's fantastic. Yeah. The movie yeah. was great. That, the comics yeah. is great. And in the movie, they did a lot of, um, of tribute to the art style and framing yeah. of the comics. So that was mm-hmm. also great. Um, unfortunately, not well patronized. So hopefully Sandman gets some patronage. Yeah. And that brings us to the end of our episode one and two uh, watch along review of the Sandman. If you did enjoy this, um, please leave a like and leave a comment on your your thoughts uh, on our review and of the Sandman in the comment section down below. Uh, Subscribe to our YouTube page. It's at Honeycomb Manila, so click that and click the thumbs up button and the little notification bell. Uh, we're going to try and do this every week uh, and try and get through all of the Sandman two episodes at a time. So this is the first of five episodes and then we'll we'll decide if we're going to do a wrap up episode. It depends really on what that 910 is like, right? That episode 910, whether it merits us talking just about the episodes or if you're able to talk about the episodes and the entire series as a whole. I think we need to make a separate episode for the wrap-up. I know, right? Yeah. That makes sense. Follow along on Instagram. I'm at Keo Kosha and he's... (laughs) I'm at H-N-T-R-P-R-K on Instagram. Yeah. There's going to be... There's graphics. Yeah. Just pause the video. And follow at Honeycomb Manila, which is this, our studio in Double Dragon Plaza. We do a lot of fun stuff here. Most of the time, we're working on work things. Uh, but I think one of the big parts of Honeycomb is to live the life that you want and uh, entertainment and being able to just talk about the stuff that we enjoy is a big part of it. Yeah. So come over here, join us for coffee. If you want to record a podcast like this, it costs nothing extra. And uh, we'll see you around. Peace. Peace.